So you're going to need um, VMware or VirtualBox. You're going to need a Windows um, virtual machine. When you ran that OVF file, make sure you go into settings. You're going to want to add a serial port. I already, I've already done so. And you're going to want to configure it um, to use a named pipe. Um, backslash backslash period backslash pipe backslash com and if there's a number next to it name it that number if there's if you see no number that means it's number one so I've named mine com underscore one you're gonna want this end is the server the other end is an application check yield CPU on pull and make sure it's connected at power on okay once you've done that you're gonna want to start it up open up a command prompt you're gonna run a few commands you're going to want to run bcd edit, which is the boot configuration data edit, forward slash debug on. You're going to want to run bcd edit, forward slash dbg settings, um, serial, debug port, semicolon one, or whatever number you saw earlier. Um, you're going to want to put baud rates semicolon 115 200 and you want to run forward slash n o u m e x hit enter at that point you're going to want to shut it down so you're going to run shutdown dash s dash t zero and it's got to start debugging uh, at this point you're going to you're going to be in the same state that i'm in so you're also going to need when debug on your host machine open that up go into file kernel debug click on com uh, you're going to want to put in that port that name port you used earlier backslash backslash period backslash pipe backslash com underscore one check pipe check reconnect hit ok and now it's waiting for a connection let's boot up this windows machine let's go back into when debug and we see that we've got a connection, but it's still waiting. It's, it's saying debugging not connected, but we see some new output here. What we have to do is we have to break. Might take a little bit. It's slow for me, I guess. There we go. So let's view the function definition. Let's view what this uh, KDPC object looks like. So we're gonna run DT underscore kdpc and we see the struct definition it has a type importance number dpc list entry deferred routine deferred context it takes this function takes those as arguments uh, we see system argument one system argument two and dpc data so we're going to run uf which stands for unassemble function ke initialize dpc hit enter the book assumes you're running a 32-bit version at least that's the impression i was given so we're gonna have to make do um 64-bit um assembly passes arguments in rcx as the first argument the second comes in rdx the third comes in r8 the fourth comes in r9 and then everything else is pushed onto the stack luckily for us we don't have that many arguments we just have three so let's get started the first instruction is setting EAX equal to zero. Easy enough. The second instruction says move a byte pointer into RCX 13H. Knowing what I just said, where um, functions take their arguments, the first argument in RCX, we can assume that this is a KDPC object and we're setting type equal to hex 13 which I believe is 19. And the next instruction says move byte pointer RCX plus one equal to one. So we're setting the importance equal to one. Next instruction says move quad word pointer RCX plus 18 hex. Um, the second argument 18 hex is here, deferred routine. The second argument is a deferred routine. The next instruction says to move a quad word pointer into RCX plus 20 which is a different context. Third argument is stored in R8, which is also a different context. The next instruction says to move a word pointer into RCX plus two, which is number AX. We know that's zero. 
and then we have move a quad word into RCX plus 38, RCX plus 38, the value of RAX. We don't know what the last, well, the high four bits are, but we know EAX is set to zero. I'm gonna assume it's setting this equal to zero as well. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time.